understanding the signs of estrus for successful heat detection in gilts and sows. In the following slides, we will be discussing heat detection in gilts and sows. You should have in front of you a heat detection card. This is yours to keep as a reference on the material you will learn here today. Why is understanding estrus so important? First, it is one of the most critical components for a successful breeding process. Second, recognizing and understanding signs of estrus is key for an accurate and consistent heat detection process. And finally, errors in detection of estrus have a high negative impact on reproductive performance. Listed on this slide are the chronological signs of estrus and reproductive events. First, you will notice vulva reddening, swelling, mucus discharge, riding behavior of other pen mates, seeking the bore, standing estrus period when back pressure is applied, insemination window and ovulation occur, and writing behavior in signs of estrus ends. The following slides represent the first reproductive event, vulva reddening, swelling, and mucus discharge. There is a rise in the estrogen levels that increase the blood flow in the reproductive tract. It starts two or three days before estrus onset, but becomes more obvious 12 to 24 hours before. Mucus is commonly observed in gilt. Sows have to be examined by opening the vulva. Non-estrous females clamp their tail or run if they are in a pen when their vulva is examined. Other behavioral changes at the beginning of heat could include a decrease of feed intake, easier to notice those females that are housed individually. Mark those females and check them in the next heat checking event no later than 24 hours. The next behavior you will notice during estrus is the riding of other pen mates. Sows and gilts will mount and ride pen mates when housed in a group setting. When individually housed, they will try to bite or climb the dividers when stimulated with the boar. Females in group housing that are in heat will leave marks on their back and flanks of other females from riding behavior. Females who are not in heat will not tolerate to be mounted or touched. The next two slides discuss the seeking of the boar event. At the same time the females develop riding behavior, they also develop a strong interest in the boar. The females will seek the boar out to get closer to him. Estrus is getting stronger when the standing heat period starts and will last at least 48 hours from the onset of estrus. Continuing with our chronological signs, next is the standing estrus when back pressure is applied. We recommend direct physical boar contact with group housing. Working with a fresh boar is key. You will want to rotate them every 60 minutes. When individually housed, fence line exposure with nose-to-nose -nose contact is required. The standing reflex will often last for 10 to 15 minutes, then the females will become unwilling to be mounted even though they are still in heat. This refractory state fades within a few hours and females will accept the boar and stand immobilized again. As a reminder, it is important to record in your record system all gilts that are heat not served, also known as HNS. When all the previous events are observed, now we are ready to inseminate the sow or gill and ovulation begins. Most females will receive two doses of semen in a 48 hour window. Each insemination should be 24 hours apart. As you can see 
on the card in front of you, the ovulation occurs in the last third of the standing estrus period. Coming to an end of our chronological signs, we will discuss indicators of when estrus ends. When standing estrus period ends, females do not exhibit solid standing heat in the presence of the bore during the back pressure test. They also do not seek the bore anymore. If you are noticing these behaviors, do not breed them under any circumstance. If you have any questions, discuss them with your production manager and please let your PIC representative know if you need any extra heat detection cards or posters. These are general recommendations and we encourage the production staff to follow the farm protocols. Farms should have procedures created and approved by their production management head.